Ladies and gentlemen, Redis Geeks and Gigettes, welcome to Redis Day. that on the agenda it says that I'll be talking about Redis Graph which is sort of true um, the main idea or the main topic of this talk would be graph distribution um, so just to get everybody on the same page here um, what are graphs and <clears throat> what is a graph database so um, graphs are basically a set of nodes where node can represent some entity, so we can have nodes representing users and nodes representing countries. And once we have those nodes, we can start forming connections uh, between nodes. So for instance, we have uh, a node representing myself and I can connect myself with a node which uh, says that I'm attending this conference and this conference being another node. And so graph databases are specialized in storing, processing, and querying these type of data, connected data, graphs. Um, a couple of use cases of why or when you would like to use uh, graphs or graph databases. So just to name a few, uh, fraud detection or fraud prevention systems, recommendation engines like the one uh, used by Amazon or eBay, and obviously social networks like LinkedIn uh, and Facebook are obviously using graphs. And uh, Redis Graph being uh, a graph database developed here in Redis Labs is a property graph or fo it's following the property graph module, meaning that um, entities within the graph can have properties. So for example, I can have a node and the node can have an attribute uh, like name or an age. Similar to nodes, also edges can have attributes. Uh, with that said, we can also label nodes. So for instance, I can say this node is of type person or that node is of type country. With that, we're not enforcing a schema. So we can have two nodes of the same type, but the set of attributes can differentiate. So we can have a person entity with an edge, with an age attribute, and another person entity which doesn't have an age. Um, we're using the Cypher query language to uh, query our database. So those of you who have used uh, Neo4j before, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, you have used Cypher. Uh, it's pretty common in the graph database world. Um, we can also do, when, when executing a query, you, you can do aggregation. So for instance, you can sum or average or count entities. And we're also supporting arithmetic expression. So for example, you can uh, take the average age of all person entities within your graph and divide it by the max age found. Um, the result set itself is a table. So for those of you who are coming from a SQL background, that should feel pretty natural executing a query and getting a table as a result set. But uh, for me, or as I um, gain more experience in, in the graph world, I feel like a query on a graph should return a subgraph. So this is an interesting area to investigate as we go forward. No, it doesn't want to continue? Good, all right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the actual structure or the actual uh, data types we can use in order to represent a graph. So the first one, is not the most obvious one, at least for me, this is not the one that I would choose to use or this is not the one which really comes to mind when you're, you're thinking about a graph. 
but there are a number of really popular graph databases who are actually using tables behind the scene to store uh, their graphs. So the basic idea is to have a dedicated table for each node type. So in, here you can see that we have a table dedicated for all the nodes in the graph of type person. And each column is an attribute of that person. Uh, in addition, we have a country table storing all the countries within our graph. And then we have those mapping tables connecting persons to uh, countries with a visit edge. So if we look at the first row, we can realize that person with row ID 1, in this case myself, has visited country at row 2, in this case Japan. Um, I feel like this is not the most optimal uh, model for storing a graph because basically what we're doing here is forcing one data type or data structure onto another. Sorry, tables are optimized to store either rows or columns. They're not meant to store graphs. But by doing so, using tables and building on, on top of existing mature databases like MySQL, uh, Oracle, MS SQL, you're getting all of those really uh, mature features like replication, persistency, distribution for free. So if I'm able to give my users a graph API on top of tables with them not realizing that behind the scene we're using tables, uh, I'm gaining a lot. So I believe that this was the uh, intention or motivation behind using tables to store graphs. And similarly, Mongo is a document store, so we can use the same concept with tables, only with documents. So the idea here is that each document is basically representing a single entity. So here, once again, we have a document representing myself and another uh, document representing Japan. And we can see that the last attribute or the last property uh, on my document is an array called visited, and this simply tells us that there is a relation of type uh, visit between document ID 1 to document ID 6, and this is how connections and edges are formed. And now we're getting to the actual, what you're, probably if you ever took uh, a course about graphs in the university, that is what they teach you. So the first uh, structure or model it's called an adjacency list. And the idea here is that every node maintains a list of its neighbors. So if I go to node number one, and I would like to know who are your neighbors, uh, edges going from node number one uh, to, to other edges. So I, I, I can inspect the adjacency list and find that out. Um, it is a pretty compact. We're not saving any additional information besides exactly what we need. The problem with this type of model is that we don't have a clear view over our entire graph in one place. So for example, if I were, were to ask you how many nodes are in your graph, you wouldn't be able to tell me the answer, the simple answer, uh, only if you perform a full traversal of the entire graph. Similarly, if I ask you, is there a node connected to node K? Because we're only storing outgoing edges, you would have to perform a full traversal in order to find who is connected to node K. An alternative would be an adjacency matrix. So here, the idea is to have a table with n rows and n columns, n being the number of entities within my graph, and if row i, column j, the entity at ij, has a 1 in it, that means that node i is connected to node j. So here, answering a question such as how many nodes do I have in my graph is pretty simple. It's the number of rows or number of columns in the matrix. Is there someone connected to node k? This is also pretty simple to answer. We just look up uh, column k 
If there's a one in it, then the answer is yes. Uh, there's someone connected to node K. The row where the uh, one is at, this is the node which connects to K. Right. So uh, we've talked about the graph index so far. A couple of words about how we're actually storing nodes. So in the first version of Redis graph, nodes being just a set of properties or a set of attributes, were stored within Redis um, as hash tables or hash objects. So each node had an ID. That ID were the node's key within Redis. And the value was simply a hash containing each of the node's uh, attributes. The big problem today with uh, graph databases, at least as, as we see it, is that it is not imaginary, imaginary to have really big graphs. So for example, if we take Facebook, uh, we know that Facebook has roughly about 2 billion users. Uh, each user has on an average of 338 friends. So this gives us 676 billion edges. We've done a rough estimation on how much memory would it take us to store this entire graph in memory. And uh, a lower bound would be about 152 terabytes. So obviously this is not feasible. You can't have this entire graph sitting on a one machine. So scaling up, scaling vertically is not an option anymore. We have no choice but to go horizontally. We have to scale out. And scaling out a graph means taking the graph and partitioning it, slicing it up into smaller graphs capable of being stored on a number of different machines. So let's have a look on two approaches on how we can distribute a graph. The first one assumes that the index is small enough to be stored on the single server. And this makes sense uh, because the index basically connects between two IDs. So the overall size of a graph compared to nodes is, is pretty small. For instance, node can have a really large payload. If, for example, we're storing um, the user image, profile image within the node, then the node will, will obviously uh, take some space. So the idea here is to take nodes of the same type and putting all of the nodes of the same type um, on a single server. So here, we've uh, divided the red nodes, we put them on one server, and the green nodes, we decided to put them on another server, and the index itself is self-contained on a third server. So let's see how a query is run against this distributed graph. So what we're interested in finding is to find out which friend of mine have visited a place which I've uh, been to. And we're only interested in friends who are older than, than me, and we're also given my uh, node ID. The result set should contain the friend's name and the country he and I visited. So this is query is written in, uh, in Cypher. All right, so we're starting with the index, which is fully available on a single server. We quickly find the uh, node from which we will begin our traversal. This node represents me, and we're giving uh, its ID. All right, so first of all, let's find my friends. This is a simple traversal going out from me on all edges, uh, which represent the friend relation, and we're endi ending up in two nodes. Next up, we need to find all of the countries my friends have visited. So once again, consulting with the index, performing a single hop traversal, and we end up at the uh, red nodes. Recall, these are not the actual nodes with the properties. These are only IDs sitting within the index. Lastly, we need to perform an intersection between the friends we've found and the countries they've visited to the countries that I've visited. And we've left up with only one friend and one country. So the results that so far may look as follows. 
is just a table containing only node IDs. Now it's time to actually go ahead and fetch the name of the country and the name of the friend. And we have no choice but to perform network operations. So we're paying with latency. Our query won't run as fast as we could have if all the data was stored on a single server. We're going out uh, to perform network operations. So first of all, recall that I'm interested only in friends that are older than me. So how old am I? I need to request my age from the server which contains all the person entities given my ID. So now that I get the answer, which is incorrect, I'm 33, um, we can go ahead and ask for both the friend's name who are older than uh, 20, 29 and the country names which they have visited. And this is our final result set. Another approach where the index is too big, we have no choice, we're gonna have to split our index. And if our index is too big, it most likely then um, we couldn't fit also the nodes on a single server. So both the index is distributed and the nodes themselves are distributed. So one approach would be to split the index by relation. So all relation of type friend will reside on one server and all relations of type visit reside on another and the nodes themselves are somehow distributed. So let's see another query and how we actually execute that query uh, under this module. So here we're interested in find posts that were liked by my friends and those posts were composed by a given author. Um, so this is the query in Cypher. Let's break it down. All right, so the server that actually is executing uh, the query is the query executor and he is responsible to offload and request data from other servers. So let's first begin with finding uh, my friends of friends. Um, it turns out that not X is responsible for all friend relations. So we're issuing a subquery, uh, giving it my ID, and we're ending up with a table with uh, node IDs of friends of my friends. Next up, we need to find um, which post they liked. So as it turns out, node Y is responsible for the like relations, so we're sending it this subquery with the result set we've computed. And the result set is updated, and now for each friend, we know which posts he liked. Lastly, we need to find out which posts were composed by the given author. Once again, a network operation to node Z this time. And um, we're given the author's um, posts. We're intersecting that with our previous uh, result set. And this is our final result set, but it's missing the node's attributes. In this case, we need to get the node's name. And as it turns out, we divided uh, the node not by type, but by attribute. So we have one server which is responsible for all the node attributes regardless of the node type. So we're giving it the result set and asking him to fill out the name for each ID. And this is our final result set. Going back to Redis Graph, so as of today, Redis Graph is not distributed just yet. Currently, work is underway on a compact distributed index which you will be able to query extremely fast. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rui. Thank you very much.